and this is now our third video in our series of videos around food and nutrition for pregnant women. Um, we're going to actually fill our last section of our plate today um, and we're going to look at those foods that can give us protein. Um, we've already filled half with vegetables or salad vegetables. We've done a quarter with our um, fibrous starchy carbohydrates and now we're looking at that last quarter um, here on our plate. Um, as you can see, there is a whole host um, of ways of getting protein into our day. So when we're thinking about these, we do really want to think about a variety of foods that we're getting. So this section of the Eat Well Guide includes beans, pulses, lentils, fish, eggs, meats and other proteins. So if we start off by looking at those what we call plant-based proteins, so things like beans, um, lentils, nuts, seeds, um, we've got chickpeas here, um, we're going to get lots of fibre and vitamins and minerals from these. When we're thinking about portion sizes throughout the day, if we are purely relying on these plant-based proteins, we're looking at having them three times during the day. Um, so a portion size of, say, any of these here, would look like this four heat tablespoons um, and would also class as one of our five a day our fruit and vegetables as well um, as we said plenty of vitamins and minerals can be a good source of iron with these um, but also a really really good lean source of protein um, so we'd always encourage trying to actually get some of these sources in when we're having um, some of our meat and our, our fish based meals as well and we'll talk about that um, as we said we could also include nuts um, and seeds. This would be a slightly smaller portion size of those to get the protein in um, and great for some of those essential fats with our nuts and our seeds as well, some of our unsaturated fats. Soya, tofu, corn are other great ways of getting protein into the diet. Now similarly to any foods, the most ideal way of getting those in are in a natural form rather than being heavily processed. Some of those can be quite high in salt and sugar but going towards those ones that are more natural and cooking them yourself within meals is ideal. With our eggs then, we'll be looking at um, two eggs would make a portion. Um, when we're thinking about eggs during pregnancy, we would always want to see a lion coded stamp on there. Um, this would mean then we could have these soft boiled. Um, if you don't see this lion coded stamp, then we would be looking at having them completely hard boiled. That would be essential during pregnancy. But like I say, trying to have them soft boiled if they've got that code on there. When we're thinking about the fish we might be having throughout the week, we're actually looking to only have two portions of fish um, and a portion size being around the um, size of your hand. Um, and we're looking to have within those two portions, one of those being an oily fish. So an oily fish might be something like pilchards, sardines, mackerel, um, salmon. Um, that would give us those lovely omega-3 oils um, that's fantastic for babies, brain development, eye development, nervous system, and really essential during pregnancy and throughout life. Um, with those then, when we think about those white fish or leaner fish, um, we're looking to have those twice a, twice a week. Um, and with things like tuna, there is some guidance around that that would suggest that we should be only having tuna, um, four cans of tuna in a week, so that's quite a lot. So anything less than that is absolutely fine and a great way of getting a lean source of protein. Fish is a great source of iodine, which is really important for babies' cognitive, so their brain development. Um, but if you're not having any fish or dairy sources, so milk and cheese and things, which is also a good source of iodine, we really, really would suggest that you were looking into having some kind of iodine supplement. So no more than 140 to 150 micrograms of iodine in that supplement. Um, but just ideally if you're not having these, these foods. So food safety around fish also considers the fact that we shouldn't be eating certain types of fish, such as swordfish, marlin and shark, but also we don't want to be having um, fish that's undercooked um, or from an unreliable source. So we want to be making sure that we know where we're getting our foods from, in particularly, but also making sure we cook them thoroughly. If you are having meat and fish and eggs within your diet, you should be having around two portions per day. So with a portion size um, around the palm size for things like our meats. So when we're thinking about um, poultry, white meats, red meats, um, it would be around this size. Now, 
with our red meats, this is a great source of iron, as we know, and this is really vitally important because mum does have a larger blood volume um, to support baby. So we need to keep those red blood cells vitally healthy. Now, it's not necessarily that we need more iron than the rest of the female population, but it does need to be tip top. And what we do find is ladies generally aren't having enough. So making sure that we are having red meat um, throughout the week, we don't need to have loads, but two or three times a week would be fantastic, as well as those lentils and beans and pulses, dried fruits to really boost our iron sources. Keeping um, food such and sorry, drinks such as tea um, away from those meal times again really important to stop that tannin and um, getting getting in the way of absorbing that iron. But putting something that's got vitamin C with our foods, perhaps a glass of orange juice or something that um, like tomatoes with a meal to really help absorb that iron would be perfect. Now, when we're thinking about some of our processed meats. Ideally, we wouldn't be having these on a daily basis. They're fine to have, but again, twice, three times a week. Um, so things like ham, corned beef, sausages, bacon, burgers, um, trying to go for those leaner varieties is perfect. Maybe those with a little reduced salt. Um, so similarly with all of these, especially our meats, we want to try and avoid having too much of that unhealthy saturated fats with these. Trying to choose um, cuts that are leaner, that have less fat, or actually cutting the fat off, removing the skin from our poultry, um, and having a little look at those labels. Have a look at those traffic lights on our labels and take a look to see what's, up, what's in those foods. There are lots of food safety messages around this group, because it's a high risk protein group. Um, with meats in particular, similar to fish, we'd be looking at making sure that they are thoroughly cooked so no rare red meats um, and no undercooked meats whatsoever. That's really important. Um, and also thinking about those foods that would contain too much vitamin A, things like pate um, and anything to do with any offal, so liver, kidneys, be really important to avoid those completely, to not have any vitamin A during pregnancy. Um, when we're thinking about um, these foods in particular, we want to make sure that we're getting that right advice, that evidence-based advice with any food safety points. And really important to go to reliable sources on the internet. NHS Choices website will be completely up to date with any of the food safety um, points that we're talking about throughout any of these videos. So make sure you do visit there. We've only covered a few in this video, so make sure that you look um, and read all about it. it, gives you plenty of examples. So, as we've said, really important to have these foods to get that protein source in to support development and growth of baby and for your own protein needs. Um, thinking about this, we need to have two portions if we are having meats and fish and eggs. But if we are having those days that are just purely beans, pulses, lentils, nuts, those plant-based proteins, then make sure you up it to three times a day to get what we need in, those important vitamins and minerals in an important protein source. Have a look over the coming weeks at your portion sizes, like we've discussed, and how we fill that plate. Is it just a quarter or is it more? So thinking about what you're actually eating is ideal. And we'll see you soon.